Hey, what's going on guys? Doom here. And uh, this isn't going to be a part of my uh, how to make a montage series, but um, the I think the next part of my how to make a montage series is going to be about syncing. And uh, I sync completely 100% with Twixter. So um, this is just going to be like an in-depth uh, Twixter tutorial. So you guys know how to use Twixter and how I use Twixter. And then we can just jump into syncing on the next one. You guys will already know how I use Twixter and everything like that. So I think this will just be a, be a lot easier, you know. Um, so don't confuse this with a syncing tutorial because it definitely is not. This is just me showing you in depth how Twixter works, uh, how I work with Twixter, and uh, what I think or how I use it to get the best outcome, I guess. Um, so here's just a little preview. I did it kind of fast. There's no music or anything like that, but uh, this is generally what we're going to be doing. So notice there's really no warping around the gun, which is always the worst part. There was a little uh, warping up there, but you're always going to get a little bit, especially when you're moving in places like this. But for the most part, you'll notice there's really no warping at all, which is great. There's no ghosting. Everything looks fine. Um, you'll notice right there at the uh, at the top here, at the roof, you'll notice a little bit. <clears throat> And that has to do with because there's these uh, vertical lines right here and you can run into problems like that but uh, for the most part if you had a color correction over this and this was actually in like an episode or a montage you wouldn't even notice that anyways. But uh, we're mainly just focusing around the gun and making sure there's no warping around the gun. So for the most part there's none. You'll see a tiny bit here but uh, once again with color correction and motion, uh, motion blur and stuff like that. Uh, you'd never even really notice it, so I guess let's jump right into this, guys. So this is my comp that I just had. Uh, go ahead and put your footage in here. I'm just going to create a new comp with it. So here we go. I'm going to scale this up by one so we don't have that black line over there. <clears throat> I'm just going to find the point in which I want to start this. So I'm just going to start it at the same point <clears throat> that I did before, which was right here. And there goes my fans. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm thinking about actually buying like a good mic or something to record these tutorials. I'm contemplating it. Um, so you guys don't have to deal with stuff like that, but... I'll save that for another commentary. Alright, so you have your clip, you have where you want to start it and everything like that. You go ahead and add Twixter Pro. Uh, I use Twixter Pro, some people might use Twixter. Uh, I used to use Twixter and I don't know, I use Twixter Pro now, I feel like it's a lot better. Uh, so I'm going to use Twixter Pro. Uh, that is a third party plugin. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys how to get it, but uh, I'm sure you guys can find it somewhere. Um, so once you have it in here, uh, you need to make sure and put the frame rate the same as what your source footage is for. Or in my case, it's 59.94. Most PBRs and stuff recording that. Uh, if it if your footage isn't 29.97, um, it's like Twixer is almost impossible. Uh, that's what really sucks about working with 29.97 clips. Um, so that's why most editors won't edit unless it's at 60 frames per second. So once you have that, these are kind of my Twixer settings. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go right down here to Image Prep, and it's going to be on None, and you're going to select Contrast slash Edge Enhance. And then you're going to go down here to where it says Warping, and you're going to click that, and it's going to say Inverse, and you're going to put it on Inverse with Smart Blend. And then you're going to go down here to Main BG Layer Settings. You're going to drop that down, and the layer sensitivity should be on 70, and you're going to up that all the way to 100. So this is going to make your renders a little longer and everything like that, but for the most part, it's going to be well worth it. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to twix it right here at this point. So I'm just going to hit the stopwatch up here to uh, set a keyframe, and you can go ahead and hit U on your keyboard to bring up uh, your keyframe. So there it is right there. And I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm just going to go one frame ahead, and I'm going to drop it down to five in my case. Now, as far as speeds go... Um, <laughs> it kind of varies on the person. Uh, if you guys are familiar with my edits, 
you know that my Twix is pretty slow and that it's really my edits are kind of jumpy I guess you could say is what most people call them um, so this is all up to you you could put it at 10 20 30 just as long as you're not getting any warping uh, so I am going to show you an example of that. I should be able to get an example right here. Um, so you'll notice right up here, you'll start seeing, I'll try to put this on full so you can see it better. You'll start seeing a lot of warping and stuff around the gun. All around in here, you'll see all that. And this is what I see constantly in edits that irritates the shit out of me. It's unbelievable how many times a day I see this. And I'm gonna tell you why it does this and kind of explain my theory on it and everything. You know, I'm not an expert or anything, but uh, I'll tell you what I think. Basically, Twixer is interpreting frame by frame. Um, because you're only working with 60 frames per second, uh, it's kind of making its own frames as you go along to make it look like this. Um, so when you, the, right now, down here where the gun is, there's a little movement, you know, the gun's barely moving, and that's why you're able to Twixter and it looks so smooth, because Twixter is, uh, able to interpret the frames in between and create a nice, smooth-looking slow motion, whereas if you get up here, the gun, is, from frame to frame, the gun is moving so fast, in fact, I can show you that right now, I'm just going to take Twixter off, so you'll notice right here frame to frame see how the guns barely moving this is without twixter the gun is barely moving so that's why when you twixter this it looks so good because it's easy for twixter to interpret the frames in between and make its own frames whereas if you get up here look how much it's moving per frame so when twixter's trying to make this slow it's hard for it to make the frames in between and it causes that ghosting or warping effect which is completely ugly and terrible. So that's why I noticed in my edits I always twix her with a gun is down here. It seems like the less um, movement that you have and the f I know this kind of seems weird because we're working in 2D space here because uh, technically this is just a 2D layer but the closer something is to your eye or to the screen on Call of Duty the more ghosting you're gonna have. So, for instance, if you had this person back here dying and he was falling over and I twixtered it right here, it would look okay because he's so far away. If he was right in front of you, you would notice all sorts of, you know, warpiness around him and everything like that. So that's why I always twixter right where the gun is down here. And you can go quite a ways. You'll notice uh, you'll get a little bit of ghosting around the HUD. That's what kind of sucks is the HUD kind of screws you up. But I mean, I can get pretty smooth Twixter all the way up until about there, you know. So all of this is workable. So that's why I'm just going to go about 130 in, and I'm just going to do a jump. Now remember, there's no audio. So this is not, <laughs> this is not syncing at all. I'm just putting random points in time just to give you guys an example. Uh, we'll get into syncing soon enough. So this would this would be how I would do it. Um, so you have it right here. This is five. You know you're still slow mo all the way up in here, and then I would go five frames ahead, and I would put it at like 200, 300, whatever you want. You can make this longer if you want it to come to your eye. Like right now, it's gonna. And you'll see, you'll notice a little warping right there, but it's going so fast at this point that you really can't tell. And if you want to get rid of that, I could just bring this back a little bit, see, and you won't even notice it anymore. So there you go. Now I don't have really any warping. And like I said, it's going so fast you won't really notice anyways. Now uh, you'll notice that I'm jumping into the scope really fast here. You know, it only takes four frames before I'm into the scope. Now you could drag this keyframe out and it would slowly get to your eye faster and faster but there's your problem right there you're gonna notice warping if you have a good clip or you have a high FPS you can do stuff like this and it does look really good but in my case I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at the four frames so it takes four frames to get into the scope and that's just my personal preference like I said I'm kind of a jumpy editor so what I do when I sync like this um, is right as right when you get into the scope, I duplicate this layer, and then I take Twixter off, 
and I'm going to find the point of where he shoots the bullet. Now a lot of people don't like this style of editing. I do it for flow purpose and just to make syncing a little easier on me. I know some people would be mad about this that I don't show how long he's in the scope but you know that's just my style of editing. I know a lot of people edit like that so that's just my thing. So uh, you have this really slow coming up here. I'll notice a little ghosting up here and stuff but like I mentioned before after you put motion blur and uh, color correction stuff like that on you won't even really know and also black bars will cover a lot of this up so if you edit with black bars which I personally like black bars on every single edit but that's just my personal preference but you notice it's real nice and slow and then it just jumps right into the shot so um, we're gonna go ahead and twist in the next clip coming out of the scope and how I do that so it works in basically the same idea um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to add Twixer, I'm going to put it on my same settings, contrast edge enhance, inverse with smart blend, uh, up this, and now this this really can be time consuming, uh, I understand that, but I think if you follow my steps and um, you know you use Twixer like I use Twixer, you're going to end up with a really nice uh, final product, um, you're not going to have any ghosting, your syncing is going to look really nice, so I mean it's worth the time in my opinion. Uh, it can take me a few days to sync an entire episode, so it's nothing like using Sony Vegas or Velocity or anything like that, I can tell you that much. Um, so I'm just going to show you another example. A lot of people will do this, same thing. They'll twixter right as you're coming out of the scope. And look how much warping we're getting around this, you know? We're good. Ah, I'm not even going to fuck with that. You'll notice how much warping there is all the way down you're getting a little there it's not terrible you'll notice right there you'll notice it you know and it just looks completely ugly and uh, it irritates me when I see edits like this that uh, people don't take the time so uh, I'm just gonna delete those keyframes so we're back to just speed is normal 100 and I'm gonna go right about in here. Now this is all personal preference again. You don't have to do it this way and I'll show you a couple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and keyframe this and I'm going to go down here right about where you would want the Twixer to start. So right about in here. I'm going to drop it down to 5. So now you have this nice this nice curve of slow motion I guess you could say um, where it starts fast and it ekes into your slow mo. Now you don't have to do it this way um, I could just bring this over and then just go like one, like I could make it one frame. So it's fast and then it just slow. All of a sudden, like just one frame and boom, it's slow. I prefer to eke into it. That's just my way of doing it, you know. I'm not saying my way is the way to do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. So I'm going to ram preview this real quick. It might take a couple seconds. Um, uh, while this is rendering though, what I can say is I've worked with Twixer for uh, quite a long time. Uh, I've been using After Effects for about a year now, I would say, maybe a little longer, year and a half. Um, so I'm pretty used to it, I'm pretty used to syncing with it and everything like that. Um, and I'm just going to say, just practice with it a, a lot, you know, like use it a ton. You know, that's how I got so used to it, that's how I'm able to sync with it fairly fast and get pretty smooth you know like everything that I learned about it I just taught myself you know I just thought that yeah and there you go there's a little you know notice there was a little ghosting a little warping but for the most part it's pretty smooth and you can go on and work with it and like I was just about to say um, just practice with it a ton you know just mess around with it don't be afraid to just go into After Effects and mess with stuff you know uh, you're not going to hurt anything, you know, you're, you're not like ruining anything, so don't even worry about it. Um, that's how I learned everything. Um, I just found that going into After Effects and messing around is the way to go. Now, I don't have a problem with watching tutorials, obviously, or I wouldn't be making tutorials. But for the most part, when I watched tutorials back when I was first starting out, um, I would watch them and then I would I would just take the idea that the person gave me or like an effect and I would go into After Effects and I would just mess with it until I found something that I liked, you know. So this is how I got used to Twixter. I just mess, messed with it. Um, 
this is like I said this is how I sync everything so it can be time consuming but I think the effect is really nice um, <clears throat> I pretty much showed you for the most part I'm not gonna keep syncing this clip well it's not really syncing but I'm not gonna keep going you guys get the point you know uh, make sure and keep you want a, a little amount of uh, motion as possible in the clip so I can even just uh, keep the, I mean and it works with freaking everything I mean it's all the same um, we'll go out here Like, right, um, that's another thing. I guess I can cover that real quick. So, for the most part, when you see, hold on, when you see I'm twixting right here, he's standing in one place. He's not turning about, he's not moving, anything like that. So, it, it's the same thing. Like, I was just saying, you don't want, like, any motion. So, I'm going to show you how, if I twixted this up here, like, right here, when he's coming out of the scope, he's going to be turning to the right. You see that? So, I'm going to twixter that. This is even with my good settings. It's not like I'm like trying to show you. but um, So I'm going to get into that. I know I could go one frame at a time. I don't know. I'm just used to doing it this way. So <clears throat> you'll notice as he turns to the right here, how much warping we're going to get on the sides. So you're going to start seeing this black edge come in and um, a lot of warping on the sides. Now I know there's a way to fix this and Baker's Tuts has talked about it before. Um, you can go watch his tutorial on it. I know he talked about it or if you want me to I can just make a tut. Uh, there is a way to kind of get rid of this. It's not going to fully get rid of that but in my opinion just why would you twixter this in the first place? That's just my biggest uh, pet peeve is yeah, there is a way to kind of get rid of this, but there's no point. Just don't twix it at that point, you know? Because look how, I mean, look how terrible that looks. How much ghosting and everything we're getting on the sides. And believe it or not, I see this on a regular basis. So I'm trying to stop this in the community. I want everybody to be able to, you know, use Twixter properly. And that's kind of the point of this. So just make sure in Twixter when there's not a whole lot of movement going on. And, you know, just go in and maybe think, oh, well, Twixter might look good at this point. And you just add it and you look at it. And, you know, if there's a lot of ghosting and you don't think it looks very great, then just put it on another point. And just keep trying it until you find a place that you do like it and just keep going like that, you know. Like I said, it's all just uh, trial and error. It's all just practicing and messing around with stuff. So um, that's just kind of my idea and my theories on how to use Twixter and everything. So... I hope you guys liked it. Um, one thing I did want to talk about is, just real quick before I end this, because I know it's probably dragging on, um, is to leave more comments. Uh, I'm getting a fairly good amount of likes and ratings on this, or on the, the series, so that's really good. But uh, comments are really helpful. You know, I really appreciate feedback. Um, if you guys want to give me any ideas, like uh, I've seen a few people giving me um, some ideas or asking for tutorial requests. Uh, if you guys or if you guys leave requests, I'll definitely get around to them, um, depending on what it is. So uh, just go ahead and ask me stuff. Um, also, if you want to send me video responses to um, something maybe you've learned that I've like that you learned from me, and then you went and did it. Um, I know somebody sent me a video response of their motion tracking that he learned from watching my tutorial, and I accepted it and uh, you know put a comment on the video and everything. So. If you guys want to um, show me you guys using the stuff that I teach you, that'd be really cool, and I'll accept video responses and everything like that. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure and follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. And until next time, guys, I'm out. Peace.